Let's take a look at one of the individual tools within the ribbons. You'll notice that right here we'll have a wall tool and right next to it a door tool. Those are two examples of tools that are in the build panel of the ribbon. The wall tool has a little triangle underneath it, which I'll show you in a second. The door tool is standing by itself. Fairly simple. If I want to place a door, I use the door tool. It even gives me, when I hover over it temporarily, it tells me door and DR, which is the shortcut for the door tool. And if I hover over it long enough, you'll see that you get a, an entire uh, pop-up window here that tells you in detail what the tool does. This is a very helpful thing for when you're starting to learn how to use Revit. Um, if you get to a point where you don't need these help menus anymore, we can use that options button that I showed you in the applications menu, and we can actually turn these warnings or these things off so they won't be in your way. Now, the door tool is a single tool. But if I go to the wall tool, I actually have a pull down and I can select multiple things underneath that tool. And again, if I hover over one of them, like for example, structural wall, I will get a small uh, graphic indicating exactly what it is and a small explanation of what the tool does. Right underneath the ribbon, uh, we have a gray bar currently, but this is a very important area of the screen. It's called the options bar. Right now it's blank but that option bar fills itself with information depending on what tool I've activated. Again, I'll activate the wall tool, and you'll notice as soon as I do, I get a whole selection of options for that wall. Uh, I can choose how high the wall is going to go. I have some justification uh, choices here, uh, whether the wall will continue if I continue drawing it, which is the chain button right here, and so forth. So this options bar will change depending on what tool I use, and it's a very important piece. If I skip down to the bottom of the screen, I have what's called the status bar. The status bar is right here in the very bottom corner of the screen, and it is a very important tool to let you know what the software is expecting you to do. So right now, Revit is telling me, click to enter the wall start point. It's fairly simple. I click, and I can start to draw my wall. Now, even as I'm drawing my wall, uh, the status bar down below actually explains what it's doing and what it's expecting next. For example, if I put it at an angle like this, the wall at an angle, um, the status bar at the bottom says enter wall endpoint, space flips orientation. That means the space bar. It actually is going to flip the orientation of the wall, which again we'll get into later. But these are small hints that Revit even gives you uh, besides just the basic tools. Now, if I draw my wall straight like this, the status bar even tells me that currently I am perfectly horizontal on the sheet, and currently in this scenario, I'm vertical. So again, the status bar is a very important part of the software that constantly gives you hints and lets you know what the software is thinking and what it's expecting you to do. Now let's look at the drawing area. That's obviously the main portion that you've been looking at, the main white area here in the center, and that's where you're going to be doing all your drawing and all your modeling. Uh, each drawing area, you can have multiple drawing areas, which we'll also see later on, uh, will have its own view control bar. The view control bar is this piece down here at the bottom, and it does things like designate what kind of scale your drawing is at, how much detail you would like your drawing to have, uh, whether you'd like the drawing to be you know, wireframe, hidden lines, or shaded views, and so forth. These uh, different types of settings are view-specific, and every view will get them. 